is I want to highlight one of these catalogs. And uh, we all know that they, these catalogs could keep multiplying. But I'm picking this person because I really missed a lot of their great work. I actually was going back to a lot of their great work, you know. And I never took the time to write about it. And this is what happens. You miss stuff. And, you know, and um, he has some albums that are incredible. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. I want to see some of the other albums that he had. Um, but uh, the guy I want to highlight now is Magno Garcia, right? The El Salvadorian brother out of Chelsea, uh, Massachusetts. Um, definitely in that mass cipher with all the great MCs there, Estinac and all of those. And um, if you look at his catalog, he's done work with all the all the dope MCs of the underground from Rome Streets, Flashiest, Clayton, King Arthur, you know, Zagnif Nori, I mentioned. He's done work with all the greats, so everybody salutes him. Everybody knows who he is. Um, where was the album where I said, where like, he's reached next level? First off, I think that he's a songwriter of persona, and I'll explain that as I go along. But, um, he really tries to give you something different, something that makes you think, something that is about his ideas. But I would say in 2017, when he released the album Chandelier Shining, that's really where I would say where he really started to reach a peak. Um, and he's been on a peak since, but that record has such great music. Um, <coughs> it's a diversity of producers that he's choosing from. <clears throat> which is always a good look because it means that they know how to construct an album, they know how to arrange it, and he had every he had guys on it, he had Conway on it, he had SD Nack, he had a lot of guys, but the 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 production is diverse, diverse and all over the place, and uh, a really great great record, and that's where I really started to say, yo, I have to go back and get everything from Magno Garcia and Magno Garcia, M A G N O. Garcia, if you look for him on the band camp, you'll find all the works on there. And um, look him up on Instagram, all of that. But um, I want to, I want to, I want to also salute though that these MCs, they're men of integrity, they're men of, of honor, and it reflects in the music. You know what I mean? And I'm going to read you a post that he had, that he had in his own words. He said, Artistic integrity is something that I've always upheld and fought for. It's highly documented that I've always been on the artist side of whatever issue may arise, so long the issue is genuine and doesn't harm others along the way. With that said, I have no issue if another artist decides that fame and how they receive profits is practiced by the standard the music game has instilled in our minds from its genesis. When I decide I want to take my music off the DSPs, I'm often met with discourse by other creatives and artists. To make it clear, Magno does not care for fame nor money lost. If all that comes with me being screwed over for art that I created with my funding and someone else is making money from it. If I never sell another album or song, I am good. So long, how it's being distributed is done how I see fit and I and whoever I collab with own the property of the creation 100%. These are just small vignettes of the type of integrity that his music has instilled. It's a slow process. He's been making music for years, and they've always been everything from the artwork to the song titling to the presentation of the work, um, the musical choices and the musical direction, um, just hardcore lyricism at its finest. And here's the interesting thing, right, because it's the God Day, right? I said, let me choose Magno Garcia because he's an MC that has said that he's influenced by the gods, he sees that God is the black man, and yet he's a Christian. And throughout his works, though, is the ideas of Christianity. And it reminded me of something I say about the music, right? This music in hip-hop was made by us black and brown, but it really elevates itself when it has the ideas of everyone that, make, that contributes to it. See... It, it's not that it only needs black and brown, but it needs people that bring all of their ideas and actually is honest about their perspectives. So 
I always found it intriguing because usually if I hear like like a Christian theme or even like um, an artist talking about the mystery God, um, man, I tune out. I tune out. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah, man, you know, I'm not going to hear like uh, insight here or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's not insightful. The more I listen to Magno Garcia, though, the more I start thinking about my first mentor um, in college, uh, um, my mentor, Professor David Traverso. First Puerto Rican I ever met that had a PhD and had seven master's degrees, actually, along with the PhD. PhD. So, and he also became a bishop, right? So we're at like the opposite ends of the extreme. And <laughs> I always tried to give value to people's ideas and thoughts because <clears throat> he was one of the first people to actually have me write about the ideas that I was thinking, even if those ideas went against what he bared witness to. And having a student question their own ideas and explore their own ideas in writing is one of the greatest things that a teacher can do for a student. And I and that's one of the uh, million, one of the millions of lessons that I've gotten from um, Traverso over the years, you know what I mean? Uh, one of many, but he also was a Traverso wrote many many papers on what I learned about liberation theology. A lot of people don't know what liberation theology is. Liberation theology is the idea, especially in places in Latin America where there is revolution, the concept of revolution being led by a Christianity that that demands that we get our heaven now. So it's like an activated Christianity. They're Christians, but they'll, they'll be about the revolution. You know, so we'll see the Sandinistas, right? The Sandinistas in the 80s, and, and they were liberation theologists. They dealt with liberation theology. And um, a lot of times, listening to Magno Garcia over the week and studying his very large catalog, I don't know if I have everything. I think I do because I like to be a completist. But my collection is about 115 songs deep. You know what I mean? And the thing about it is that there is a great thematic persona, concept, a driven warriorship where Christianity for Magna Garcia is fueling his direction to be the vision of that most high honorable man that is venerated in Christianity, Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? And it doesn't hurt at all, but helps significantly that Magno Garcia has one of the most, has some of the greatest clarity that I've ever heard on the mic. I literally didn't stumble on any bar at all. And, you know, I, I probably could say that I listen to, I can listen to lyrics better than most people. Obviously, this has been the trade. But um, not one bar, not one bar. I was like, hey, what did he say? It got muffled in the bass line, you know, stuff like that. And some of the stuff that he has, they've got some sloppy cosmic slop on there, you know, like where the bass lines, they terrorize, you know, and they give problems to the MC. But he has a great clarity. He never, he's a slow flower, but not too slow. He's mid-tempo, really. In these days and times, he's mid-tempo. If it was in the 90s, he'd be slow flow. Um, he has clarity, he has intensity, but not a wild intensity. He has a, again, like I said, that list of thematic persona, and it becomes a listening experience of his warriorship and his trials and tribulations towards that warriorship that is seeking to lead him to a greater enlightenment, you know? And it's just really, um, it's really great to listen to. You know what I mean? Um, and he's just really a clever MC. You know what I mean? Um, so the 2020 works. We'll focus on those because there's so many. But if you were collecting, you definitely, if you want to start chronologically, I, I would tell you to start from the beginning. But if you just want to start from a point where, you know, it, it isn't too many records, you don't want to get overloaded because you're weak and can't take in too much hip-hop. No, I'm just kidding. But... 2017, that, that, that Chandelier Rising is uh, uh, the one to go with. If you don't like that record, I, I don't know where the hell you, you, you're at. You know what I mean? But uh, 
the first record, I'll go with the shorter EP, um, is with producer um, Blood Blixing. A dope name. I, I don't know how he came up with that. But um, he's got a... a it's called Sinister Stones, right? Song titles, I said the song titles are clever. You got a song called Farrah Manch, right? At War with Gotham, Stanley Kubrick, Crop Circles, Fix the Scriptures, right? <laughs> Excuse me, and the title track. Um, <clears throat> so you're like, what, where the hell is he going with all this stuff? Um, in this record, this really shows his clarity because Blood Blixing really gives you a, a, a real cosmic slop bass line, you know? Um, his bass lines give real coverage, you know, a lot of, and they really drown out. They're really drowning out and they're ver they have a lot of treble to them, you know? The treble is high on the bass lines here. So what happens is that you get like a gristle, like a, you know, like that. And um, when you when you hear MCing on that, sometimes you miss words. It's it's hard not to miss words. I got to tell you, I didn't really miss words. Um, and this one, compared to the next record, really shows more of his battle bars, really shows more of his cleverness. And... Um, and again, though, I got to say this, though, 2020 Rome Streets Features, man, he has been dominating. And this is one of the Rome Streets Features uh, on Stanley Kubrick where, I don't know, you know, Rome just, he's just giving quality out. Like, Rome Streets is on a mission, you know what I mean? One of the great MCs right now, one of the greatest. And um, Sinners of Stones is definitely a nice, a, a really strong startup. But the real, um, the real Encipher record is a short album, but it's certainly an album, 10 songs, uh, called Like a Thief, that Magno released along with Retrospect. So Retrospect is on the beats. Um, Retrospect really, what he did here with Like a Thief was, and I find it very interesting because it was part of his persona, it was part of Magno's persona to venture into Christianity and how that would play into the black and brown oppression of today. How it doesn't have a context in today's world. And how it has a context on also the micro level of him himself dealing with his own family situations and growing up and how that's instilled in him. And then just in doing wrong, right? Unlike his other albums, that theme is heavily dealt with and is overtly the point of this whole album. So, out of all the works that he has, this one certainly is a more important record in understanding who Magno Garcia is, and deliberately so. Um, again, the song titles, I, I just, I like them. You know, they're, they're really well thought out. And I would say... Some of these notes here say it was a journey to a spirituality offering the trials and the insights that came about. I probably say like one of the songs that really describes that is the struggles with wrong uh, that seem inevitable, inevitable, which is a real theme that he comes across a lot, um, is the aptly titled track Romans 719, right? Because Romans 719, if you look it up in the Bible, it's really about um, the wrong that one does, you know what I mean? And the wrong that one has difficulty not doing. But um, the thing about it is that retrospect, he really, um, imagine if you could, this sounds crazy, but if you took Kanye's production on Jesus Walks, right, and heavy metaled it out and really made it angrier, you would have retrospect's production here, you know? So it's like a, it's like a, a riff off of that whole thing. It's really, it's really intriguing. You know what I mean? Because when you hear a lot of the beats, you could see like, I could hear what a lot of Kanye stuff. Because Kanye, and this is probably why Kanye likes to sample Luther Vandross a lot too, because it's very gospel tinged. Luther Vandross choruses are very gospel, and a lot of Kanye productions end up going into that gospel level. Retrospect does that here, and it, it works obviously with the with the concepts, and the drums for him, though, end up having to be more bombastic, more epic-like, you know? So, like, look for um, the first track before the Rooster Crows. Look at Parade of Killing Shaitan. Um, those two 
exemplify what I'm talking about. If you hear those two songs, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Um, but then you have songs like Vino, where it's drumless, and obviously, you know, we talked about the negative aspects that could come with that on the other segments. But um, the airy strings here, the distant hymn vocals, that mash together, that makes it become very cinematic, um, is very good. And it really works for Magno because Magno has great articulation. A lot of guys articulate on the mic and they sound corny. It doesn't come that way with Magno. And that's probably why Magno intrigues me because he talks about Christianity and he, he has themes of positivity through lots of negativity. And none of it sounds preachy, none of it sounds boring, corny. It's like he's achieving something I never thought really could be achieved, you know what I mean? Um, and his bars, like when he says stuff like 9 to 5 is where you, you bury your dreams. On Vino, he says, I, stuff, I rap for people that just never made it. These are constant themes of the, um, representing the common man and representing that intersectionality of black and brown uh, black and brown people oppressed and how we deal with things and how we deal with each other as well so there's a lot of great themes in here you know what i mean um and i think it all comes into a head on the last two songs relationship ghost which you made a video for and letters to ambassadors church you know what i mean and um those really sum up the work so even in this album the sequencing is important like, if you wanted to listen to it, the sequencing does matter. And um, as a whole, Magno's catalog is filled with great cleverness that builds on, that's built on the right word, <coughs> a forceful inflection, and this liberation the theologist persona, a very real, sincere fighter for the moral integrity of our people, the oppression black and brown go through, and a natural synergistic fight against the whack artist, the culture vulture, where the battle bars he throws hold that end up having that same epic meaning, you know, or aura, I should say, you know. So um, if we're studying all these MCs with multiple works this year, definitely um, the brother Magno Garcia um, is definitely one to check out. You know what I mean? Um, it's great to see our brown brothers from other countries, and you know, like El Salvador, where he's from. You know, really give their perspectives and, and, and be a voice for all the oppressed, you know. Um, just I can't say enough about the quality in the music that he throws out there, you know what I mean? And um, definitely check that out. Magno Garcia, go to Bad Camp. Just search for Magno Garcia because some are listed under Magno Garcia Bandcamp, but then they're listed under others like Retrospects, Bandcamp, and stuff like that. So uh, do your searches and, and you'll find all of his works. You could stream them. You can buy them they're just really great great to have